I'd like to give a little Rebecca review in case things have gotten a little rusty for you. Let's shake the dust off and uh, get back to our math roots here, okay? So here we go, vector review. First of all, remember that vectors have magnitude and direction, okay? Whereas scalars just have a magnitude. So for example, we often talk about velocity versus speed, okay? So speed is a scalar. It's only got a magnitude. I'm driving 30 miles per hour, for example. But vectors would have a direction associated with that. I'm driving 30 miles per hour east, okay? So that would be a vector. Now, vectors have components. Basically, we're living in 3D, okay? We have a three-dimensional world. On screens, it's easier to look at two dimensions, so we often do that. But either way, for example, this vector A here, which is along the this, this uh, rectangle's diagonal, um, it's got components in both the x and the y direction as drawn with this Cartesian coordinate system, okay? So if you wanted to find the x component of that vector, you could use trigonometry and you could solve for the part that lies along the x-axis. And if you wanted to know the y component of that vector, then you could use trigonometry and solve for the part of that vector that lies along the y-axis, okay? Oftentimes, we use rectangular coordinates. Those are the ones I'm going to talk about today, although spherical coordinates are really common too. Okay, so we're going to call AX and AY the component vectors of vector A. So they're going to follow all the rules for vectors. Now, if they're in bold oftentimes, or they have this arrow across the top of them, that's the notation that highlights you to, or gets you to realize, hey, this is a vector. If it's not in bold or with an arrow across the top, then you should assume that that's the scalar component, okay? So for example here, AX and AY are the scalars, and those are just the components of A, okay? So AX and AY with the arrow across the top, those are the component vectors. AX and AY, no arrow, those are the scalars. All right, so assume that you've got some vector A. All right, you've got some vector A and it's specified according to a coordinate system. You can always assume that you've got the, basically a right triangle there, okay? And that the X and the Y components are perpendicular to one another and when they intersect, they give you the 90 degree angle there on that triangle. And then what you can do is assume that you can follow and use the rules of trigonometry to solve for what the magnitudes of the X and the Y components are because you've got a right triangle. The X and Y components are going to be perpendicular to one another. And you can extend this to three dimensions. So if you have a 3D Cartesian coordinate system, then you'd have the X component of the vector perpendicular to the Y component of the vector, perpendicular to the Z component of the vector, okay? So whatever direction that you'd like to look at it in, you've got yourself a nice right triangle to do it. So um, what you can see here is that if you've specified the angle theta there, then we can resolve the components of the vector using trigonometry, okay? You could also consider yourself having a little tip-to-tail vector addition there, okay? You might look at this picture and go, hey, why is that AY vector component not lying on the y-axis? Well, that's because when you've got a vector, as long as you keep the direction the same and you don't change the length, it's the same whether you slide it wherever you want, okay? So as long as you're just sliding a vector and you're not changing its angle or its length, then it's the same vector, okay? So whether it lies along this y-axis right here or it slid over here to the um, end of this ax vector, it's the same vector. Okay, now for the triangle that I've just drawn, you could use some pretty simple formulae to solve for the x and the y components, okay? So if the angle theta swings counterclockwise from the plus x axis, then you can always use the formula that the x component of vector A is A cosine theta and the y component is A sine theta, all right? The problem is that that's only gonna work if the angle theta is specified swinging counterclockwise with respect to the plus x axis. That's it, okay? That's the only time that you can always assume that the x component is a cosine theta and the y component is a sine theta. If the angle is specified with respect to another axis, say the y axis, for example, then you can't assume that, and you're gonna either have to use trigonometry 
okay? Or you're going to have to use the angle that you're given to figure out what the angle that swings counterclockwise from the plus x axis is. So pick your, pick your poison there, that's the way it has to be, okay? So since you might pick to just use trigonometry all the time, let's go ahead and review some trigonometry because it might have been a while since you've seen it. So remember that if you've got your triangle here, I'm specifying this angle theta, which is at the bottom left of this triangle. These formulae could work equally as well if you specified another angle. It's not a problem. Um, but just remember um, that uh, this is the angle specified here. So you've got a right triangle. The um, adjacent and the opposite sides here are perpendicular to one another. Remember, that will always be the case if you're dealing with a rectangular Cartesian system, which we are going to assume that you are for the purposes of your physics courses, okay? All right, so here we have this angle, theta, specified at the, the bottom left. We're going to have three sides to this triangle. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. It's pretty easy to recognize, okay? It's going to be the one opposite to the 90 degree angle, all right? So there's your hypotenuse, right, the longest side. And then you look at your angle theta. The side that's next to or adjacent to the angle theta, okay, that's indicated here adjacent. And then the angle, uh, the side opposite the angle, we're going to call that the opposite side for obvious reasons, okay? Now remember that sine, cosine, and tangent are defined with respect to specific angles. So here, the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, all right? The cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So basically, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent are just ratios of the lengths of sides of the triangle, okay? Now, if you have the components of the vector and you want to know what the hypotenuse is, always remember that you can apply the Pythagorean theorem. And so the hypotenuse, or length of the vector A, will be the square root of the sum of the squares of its components, AX squared plus AY squared, all right? And then you can solve for the angle, if you have the components too, by taking the inverse tangent of the Y component over the X component. That'll give you the angle with respect to the X axis in some way. Okay. Okay. Now remember, the components of a vector can be positive or negative, and that depends on which way the vector points. If it points in the plus x direction, then that'll have a positive ax component, and if it points in the minus x direction, it'll have a negative ax component. If it points in the plus y direction, for example, up, then that'll have a plus y component. And if it points in the negative y direction, like down, then that'll have a negative y component. So if you go through the quadrants here, quadrant one right here in the upper right will have both components of the vector being positive. Quadrant two, swinging counterclockwise from quadrant one, quadrant two will have a negative x component and a positive y component. In quadrant three down here in the lower left, both components are negative. And in quadrant four over here, the x part is positive and the y part's negative, okay? So just remember, the sign of the components doesn't tell you anything except which way it points. Does it point left or right? Does it point up or down? This is what the components tell you. Now we also use unit vector notation. So remember what a unit vector is. A unit vector is a dimensionless vector. It's always going to have a length of one, hence the unit part of the name. Okay, so magnitude is one. And this is just so you can multiply it times whatever you like to get the length that you desire, right? One times anything is anything. Unit vectors are used to specify directions. And they don't have any other physical significance. They're just a kind of notation. Now, unit vectors are usually indicated in notation with a little hat on top of them, okay? Or a little carrot symbol, if you will, okay? So, for example, we, in um, the courses that I'm teaching, we use the x hat, the y hat, and the z hat unit vectors to indicate a vector of length one that points in the x, y, and z directions respectively, okay? So just remember, it's just notation. Here in this picture, it's shown two. Um, you can see here we have a blue vector A, okay? And the x and the y component vectors are drawn here. They, um, you can see the grid lines, so they have lengths of one, okay, the unit vectors. And this vector, unit vector, or the vector A here, it is pointing 
two units in the x direction and 1.3 units in the y direction. And so you would write vector A as 2 x hat plus 1.3 y hat, okay? So that's how you use the unit vector notation. Now as I said before, as long as a vector points in the same direction and has the same length, it doesn't matter where it's located, okay? So you can slide it wherever you like as long as you don't change the angle and you don't change the length, you haven't changed the vector. So if you need to resolve a vector into components, sometimes this can be helpful. You can just draw another set of axes that's parallel in the y direction. The y, uh, your new axis has to have the same y direction that's parallel there. Same x direction, you can draw it there and you can find the angles and the components. So sometimes it's useful to remember that, okay? Another important point is that if you multiply or divide a vector by a scalar, what that does is mostly it changes the length. So if you want to make a vector twice as long, you would multiply it by 2, okay? Now you can also flip the direction if you multiply it by a negative number, okay? So for example, if I had a vector that was um, pointing upward, I could just multiply it by minus 1 and that would make it point downward. And if I want it to point downward and be twice as long, I would multiply it times minus 2. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, if you want to add vectors, let's say that you want the resultant vector r, and you want to sum vectors a and b to get there. A lot of students get super confused about this. Let's say that you had a vector of length 4, and you're adding it to a vector of length 5. Some students just take the magnitudes of those two vectors, and they get 9. But what about this? Let's say that you had a vector of length 1, and you wanted to add another vector, also of length 1, and you did that, and you got 2, when really, you've got nothing, okay? The direction is super important when it comes to adding vectors, and that's why we do component-wise addition, all right? So you take your two vectors, a and b, you resolve them into their components. The components of vector a, for example, in 2D might be ax and ay, and the components of vector b would be bx and by. And then you do component-wise addition of your vector, okay? So you add the x stuff to the x stuff and the y stuff to the y stuff, and you don't add the x to the y, okay? All right, so for example, mathematically that would look like, just speaking of the components, Rx would be equal to Ax plus Bx, and Ry would be equal to Ay plus By, and then you add those components together. If you wanted to put it into vector notation using the unit vectors, then vector R would be equal to Ax plus Bx, the components, times the unit vector x hat, and then plus Ay plus By times the unit vector y hat. Now, once you've done that, if you want to find the magnitude or length and angle of that resultant vector, okay, this is often asked for, then the magnitude of vector r would be the square root of the sum of the squares of its components, rx squared plus ry squared. And then you could find the angle theta from the components. Theta would be the inverse tangent of y over x. All right, so that's a quick basic review, a down and dirty review of vectors and vector notation. I hope that helps, and I'll see you in class.